Question number 13. Diagram 5 shows the initial position and direction of the movement of particle A and particle B along a straight line. So I've labeled for you which is particle B and A and they are 10 meters apart. Okay. Particle A starts moving from point O. So okay, starts from point O and particle B starts moving from point P simultaneously. So at the same time. After t seconds, the velocity of particle A is given by, so they give you the velocity particle and such that k is the constant while displacement Sb is the particle for, okay, so basically this is the displacement for particle B and this is the velocity for particle A. And they also said that the acceleration of particle A, the acceleration is 3 meter per second square when t is equals to 4 seconds okay so this is specifically for particle a eh? so we can't use it for particle b now question a find the value of k so to find the value of k we have to use this info here okay is what they gave you so we have to use it because the k is in the particle a right the, the velocity formula so we're going to do that we know that the acceleration is given that when t is equals to 4, the acceleration is 3 meter per second square. So, we are going to find the acceleration formula of particle A. So, we have gotten the velocity, right? So, to find the acceleration, we know we have to differentiate the velocity formula because acceleration is equal to dv dt, the rate change of velocity. So, to find uh, DVDT, we have to in, uh, sorry differentiate. So you differentiate. Okay, well, let's write here. So we know that v is e v a is equals to t square minus k t plus six. So if you find DVDT, that will be two t minus k, right? So this is the acceleration formula. This is basically acceleration for particle a. So we just have to substitute this information. So when t is equals to 4, so that means 2 times 4 minus k is equals to 3. Okay, because acceleration is 3. So we know that k is equals to 8 minus 3, which is 5. So we got the k value. Done. Question B. Determine the range of t when particle A moves to the left. So we want to find the when particle a moves to the left. So if particle A moves to the left, we know that the velocity, since we have velocity formula, right? So we know that the velocity will be negative value. Okay, if velocity is negative value, we know that uh, the particle is moving to the left. So that if with that being said, we know that VA, the velocity, will be less than zero because the velocity is negative. So it's going to be less than zero. So we just have to do that to find the t value. So t square minus, so we already found k is 5, right? So minus 5k plus 6 is less than zero. So when we factorize this, we will get t, sorry, two brackets. Okay, we put equal zero first. Huh? So here t, here 3, uh, sorry, here t, here will be 3, here will be 2. So negative, negative. So from here, we know that t is equal to 3 seconds and t is also equal to 2 seconds. So we draw here will be 2, here will be 3. Okay. So this is less than. So less than means is this part. So that means the time in which it will be negative value, sorry, negative velocity will be between 2 seconds and 3 seconds. 2 seconds, 3 seconds. So this is your answer. There's another way you can do to make sure this is correct is by plotting the velocity graph. Okay, you can plot this graph. Okay, when you plot this graph, okay, I'll show you. Huh? I just roughly, lah, just sketch. So you know that the intercept is 6, right? So here is 6. And also it's a positive quadratic. So it's going to be a U-shape. Okay, U-shape. So something like this, oops, okay, U-shape. And then you also know that the intercepts are 
2 and 3. Here 2, here 3. So if you notice, at which part the velocity is negative? At which part? All this, right? All this value. At all this timing between uh, t between 2 and 3 seconds, the velocity is always negative. Here is always negative value. Okay, so that's why we know that when t is between 2 and 3, you get a negative velocity. Okay, so you can also do that. Okay, so that's how you solve uh, question B. Wait, let me label this, this A and B. Okay, question C. Calculate the distance of particle B from O when T is equals to 5. From O. So that means you want to find the distance of particle B, okay, this particle, from O. Okay, so since we have the displacement formula, we can straight away uh, substitute the T value. Okay, so when T is equal to 5, so the, the displacement will be 5 cubed over 3 minus 5 square minus 8 times 5 so you will get your answer negative 23 uh, 1 over 3 okay meters so this one is just calculator lah, okay so negative means what that means it's moving to the left lah. so it's correct it is moving to the left so it's moving to the left at 23 1 over 3 meters okay but is this the answer no it is not the answer because they are asking for the distance of particle B from O. From O. So that means you still have to add another 10 meters because it didn't start from O. It started from point P. So that means from point P itself is already 10 meters from point O. So that means you have to add another 10 meters. Okay. So that means the distance. The distance will be, we just use the positive last. So 23, 1 over 3 plus 10. So you get 3, 33, 1 over 3 meters. Okay, this is your answer. Alright, last question. Calculate the time in seconds when B overtakes A. So when B overtakes A, we know that the displacement should be the same, correct? It should exceed, of course, but at the moment when T over, sorry, at the moment when B overtakes A, the displacement is the same. Yeah, at that moment, okay, the displacement must be the same. So that means we know that S A should be equal to S B, correct? But we can only use this provided both of the particles are starting at the same place, okay? We can only do this when both particles are starting at the same place. Problem is, with this question, the particle B did not start together with A. It started 10 meters to the left of A. Right? 10 meters to the left. So, to make it, uh, to calculate the time in which they are both, they both meet, right? That means at the same displacement, we have to add back the 10 meters so that they are starting at the same place. Understand? So, that means we want to take SB, the actual equation should be the displacement of A is equal to the displacement of B and then you must plus 10 because it is already starting from the left, right? So you want to make it start at the same place, you have to plus back the 10. Understand? So, okay, that's one thing I want to share with you guys about this question is um, there must be, I think there is some issue with this question, the marking scheme doesn't seem to be giving the correct answer. I mean, their method is uh, seem... To me, I don't think the method is right. I have already confirmed with a few different uh, teachers. I would... I think the answer, the marking scheme may not be right. Okay? So, this should be the proper way. But of course, if you have anyone who you can consult, if you've got any teachers, please ask them. Because I believe this is the proper way. This should be the way to get the answer. Okay, the marking scheme gave is S A equals to S B minus ten. Okay, so I suggest you guys confirm with your own uh, respective teachers 
But for me, this is what I will stick with because I believe this is correct. I've already confirmed with a few different teachers as well. Okay. So anyway, coming back to this, if I use this way, um, you may not get the most accurate answer because you will get... Okay, never mind. I'll show you why. Huh? So we got this, right? SA equals to SB plus 10. So the displacement of A, we we need to find because we only got velocity here. But SB is, is given, correct? SB is already given. So we can just straight away use this. So the first step is we want to find SA first. Okay. So how do we find the displacement? So we just have to integrate the velocity formula. So to find SA, we have to integrate the velocity formula, which is t square minus 5t plus 6 dt. Okay, so you get t square, oh sorry, t cubed over 3 minus 5t square over 2 plus 6t, and then don't forget to plus c. Okay, plus c. So now, how do we find what is c? Well, we can assume, we can make an assumption. The assumption is when um, when t is equal to 0, that means when the with the time is equal to 0, is there any displacement? No, because haven't started yet, right? So it's still at the same place. So because it started at the same place, so this is also, SA is also equal to 0. So when SA is equal to 0, so all this will be 0, 0, t is equal to 0, right? And then here also equals 0. So that means the C value is also equals to 0. So in other words, we can assume that the displacement is t cubed over 3 minus 5 over 2 t square plus 6 t. This is the displacement of particle A. Clear? So with this, we can substitute. Okay, so here we get SA is t cubed over 3 minus 5 over 2 t square plus 6 t equals to so what is SB? SB is given here. So it's a uh, T cube over 3 minus T square minus 8T. Okay. So here got T cube over 3. Here also got T cube over 3. So you can just uh, remove it. Okay. Because you're going to minus anyway. So now what I'm going to do is... Um, oh wait. Don't forget to plus 10. Because you got plus 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift everything to the right. Okay, I'm going to shift everything to the right. So I've got no space here, so I'm going to write on top here. So it's going to be, um, so negative 5 over 2, and I bring over becomes positive. So positive 5 over 2 minus 1, I get positive 3 over 2. Correct? Uh? Two, yeah, correct. 3 over 2, t square, and then plus 6, bring over become negative 6, so I get negative uh, 14, t and then plus 10 okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole equation here take this whole equation I'm going to times 2 okay because I do want I don't want to have a fraction there so I get 3t square minus 28t plus 20 equals to 0 so here is where the problem happens because when you uh, factorize this because obviously you will get a decimal so you have to use the formula negative b plus minus b square minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, you have to use this formula. However, even when you use this formula, you will get two positive values. Okay, you will get t equals to um, 0 0.779 seconds. And then the other t value is 8.55 seconds. Okay, you will get these two answers. So, I would think something is not right lah, because by right, usually you will get a negative value and a positive value. So, you take the positive one, okay? But in this case, you get two positive. So, we don't know which one to choose lah. But, um, yeah, so that's why I feel there's something wrong with the question. The marking scheme, because they gave a negative minus 10 here, so in the end, they will get one negative value and one positive value, okay? So, they will take the positive value. By my opinion, it's not right because this equation in the marking scheme is already incorrect. Okay, so yeah, if you have consult any of your like teachers, okay, you have an explanation why the marking scheme used negative ten. So just let me know. Okay, let me know in the comments so that 
at least we all can learn together. But in my opinion, I believe this should be the right way. Lah, okay. So yeah, consult and let me know. Okay. All right. That's it.